You hear that? To some people, this kind of noise in a video would be terrifying. But for me, it's very soothing. The slight hum of a server room just brings me peace. And when it goes silent, I start freaking out. Behind me, you're gonna see a collaboration of, eh, it works and I'll get to it later and it should probably be okay. This is pretty much the definition of my life. Now this is Kirk. Now this is kind of the backbone of my local backup solution because of a free software. Synology technically sent this to me like years ago, right? This is the DS1621XS Plus. Get it, XS? like excessively sexy. Now you might be saying, but what about Loki, Jason? We've seen you build Loki. It's your biggest server. And it is. In fact, my Unraid system has 565 terabytes of usable storage. That includes the main array and a ButterFS pool. To compare, this tiny little Synology only has 61 terabytes. And you may have already guessed it, but today's video is about World Backup Day. And even though technically not sponsored, Synology technically sent me the hardware like two or three years ago. So kind of sponsored maybe? Let's move into the other room where it's definitely cleaner and not as loud. According to Wikipedia, World Backup Day started in 2011 from a guy on Reddit complaining that nobody reminded him to back up his data and he lost all his crap. Look, I can't confirm or deny it, but I will say that the official World Backup Day pledge is I solemnly swear to back up my important documents and precious memories on March 31st, hashtag World Backup Day. Okay, in spirit of World Backup Day, I wanna tell a story about how ChatGPT ate my homework. This actually comes as kind of an embarrassing story because I've been touting like how amazing ChatGPT is. But you know what, when you create a powerful tool, sometimes it can be used as a weapon. In this case, this is my DVR, that is my Unraid, this has 565 terabytes worth of storage, this does not, and I was using ChatGPT to create bash scripts and I eventually ended up asking it to write me a script to tell me the current progress of transfers and it deleted everything off of my cache drive. Everything, just gone. Just like that, I can't snap with my left, gone. And the worst part is I didn't even notice it for two weeks, two weeks. Maybe like one and a half weeks, but it, it was like, I think two weeks. But that's what Synology but save my. Okay, hear me out. Backups are cool, right? There's that 3 two, one rule where you have to have three copies of your data in two separate folders on one drive. Everyone knows this rule. And following the 3 two, one rule, because I didn't realize that all of my Dockers got screwed up from ChatGPT, it was actually really super nice to be able to go back in time with snapshots and look at previously stored backups before my pre-configured delete happened on my main server. I know everybody just wants to judge me on what commands I was asking ChatGPT. So here's where I started. I started with this. I eventually ended up with this, which then a couple weeks later, give or take some change, led to this. How long do I stay? You got, okay. Hey, if I would have looked at it long enough, I would have realized that it had delete all the old crap argument in there and it would have deleted it. I would have realized this, but I didn't, okay? I didn't. But you know what Unraid did? Unraid did not shut down my Dockers. No, instead, Unraid rebuilt the Docker images. Unraid continued on for weeks. I don't use just the cache drive for everything. I have a separate drive for Plex. So Plex, metadata and everything was unaffected. It still worked. That was the only freaking thing that I used every single day that if it went down for three seconds, I would know. I have this set up for automatic delete. By the time I realized that I screwed up and deleted everything, the backups of my app data were already deleted and the new backups were created. And they're like, like four megabytes or something. But Synology has a free software with every NAS that's called Active Backup for Business. And it is amazing and it gives you snapshots. Oh my gosh, that was really bright. Now I've had Synology for a while. This is just the newer version, even though this is like two or three years old. Hey, there's like a rack mount one now that handles more drives. That's pretty cool. But I was able to carry over all of the backups from the original one that I set up, the Active Backup 
and I go back all the way to April of 2020. Not on everything, but that's like my oldest backup. So after ChatGPT savagely deleted my data and then I didn't notice it for two weeks because I don't use the dockers every day and I didn't realize that they weren't working. I was able to recover the files by going into the active backup for business interface and rewinding time to a time before the videos were deleted. The funny part is, is that I was willing to just accept the loss and set everything back up again, but I went to go set up NordVPN through the uh, deluge and I didn't remember how to do it. So then I Googled it and then I landed on my own video and then like I popped up and then I started to talk about it and I freaked out. I'm like, no way, this is not happening. I need to find a solution. That's when I remember that the whole active backup thing was a thing because it was deleted off of my server and I just like thought to myself, I have to set all this up. I wasn't motivated enough, you know, until I had to watch myself and I'm like, dude, I am not setting up all my Docker containers again. It's not going to happen. Not with this guy at the wheel. Some of you might think this is like a self-deprecating joke, but no, this is legit how it played out in my head. Like, okay, I lost it. It kind of sucks, but not a really big deal. I can just reconfigure it. And oh my God. Since you have the ability to essentially tie everything on your network into Synology for an active backup solution, I kind of completely forgot about it. And then when I remembered, I realized that, oh, I can just go in, rewind time, and maybe dust this off. There we go. I can go in, rewind time, pull that data, and I can be saved. And that's kind of the end of the story. I saved a bunch of time and I didn't have to watch myself set up all the things that I set up before in the past and made a video about. But very shortly after I did all of this, I ended up upgrading my computer, my main computer. And I have a RAID 1 that stores very old files, files I can't replace old photos of me. Things like this, you know, back when I was trying to be cool with puka shells and live strong bracelets. Have you ever set backups to automatically do the backup things that backups do and then realize that somewhere along the line, your disk got corrupted and then it was backing up corrupted data? Have you ever done that? I have, and that's fun. Now I actually, depending on the severity of the file, like things I can't replace, photos, documents, things like that. I actually do follow the three, two, one rule. So the drama in this story is not as like intense as maybe I'm portraying it because I have internet backups of a lot of the stuff that I was kind of scared I was gonna lose. Not everything, but a lot of it. Like storing terabytes worth of data on the internet, or I'm sorry, the cloud. So you have to kind of tier your data, like, you know, not important if I lose it, kind of important if I lose it, and if I lose it, I'm screwed. Three copies of your data, two of them kept locally, and one of them kept online. That is the three, two, one rule. And in the spirit of World Backup Day, in honor of Synology, I can say, I used my second copy of my data locally to save from having to re-download and potentially lose some data. Kind of, like, you see, anticlimactic, you know what I mean? But that's the sense of security that three, two, one gives you, yeah. When I built my new PC, Windows said that my RAID 1 was corrupted. So I went to go fix it, found all the data was corrupt. I thought something got screwed up, which it did, but it was like six months ago. And this actually took a lot of digging because I had to find a date that my data was not corrupt because it had been going on for so long. But look at this though, I can go back in time and I can just look at old backups. Or more specifically, somewhere in this August-ish range, I was able to find a good solid copy of the data that I had lost. So Marty Bore telling that story. I mean, you get it. I went back in time. I used a free software by Synology and I saved my data. Neat. But let me give you a tip. You need something like this. If you have a Synology NAS and you have active backup for business set up, you can make it take images of your computer, which is actually pretty cool because I have 228 terabytes worth of data stored and compressed on 31 terabytes because it does the data duplication avoidance thing. I, I don't know, it's magic, but check this out. If you want to recover your computer because you have an imminent failure, you need, you need a USB recovery drive. Now somewhere in here, I got like Windows 10, Windows 10, 11, and eight, but this is the one that really stands out. This is a Synology recovery disc. You can download it from the Synology website and basically you plug this disc in, you can recover your Windows installation via the network. Oh yeah, there's this. Via the network with your login credentials to the Synology NAS. This is because it did not recognize the drivers for my motherboard and I didn't want to go through the hassle of finding the drivers. So I just, I plugged this in and it recognized it and it 
and did it over one gigabyte per second, one gigabit per second. It was crucially painful and cru crucially, it sucked that it worked, but that's a whole different story. You may not need a whole plethora of different drives, but I definitely recommend if you have a Synology NAS, have a drive ready, know where it is, and get an adapter that you know gets supported. This is a, this is a StarTech. StarTech. You just have to find one that you can get the drivers for that will work on every computer. That way you know that you don't have to access the internet to find the driver for your motherboard that you're trying to restore. You have one on file. We'll just call that a pro tip. Synology can integrate with online backups, which is great because it takes the one out of the three and the two, which is, just makes things easier. Again, sponsored like two years ago, but I've relied on Synology all of this time, and I'm making this video today in honor of it saving my butt more than twice. It's like This is like three times. But it's not the size of your data, okay? It's what you do with it. Synology is really good at handling your data. So what's the moral of the story? It's to go forth and configure your backups, my friends, because you know that one day you will need them and they may not be there. But if you set things up properly, you will be okay. But seriously, do you have at least three copies of your most precious data? Two copies local and one copy online. I want you to check your configuration right now. Hashtag World Backup Day.